In today's video, we're going to take a look at how to measure some crystal parameters. Uh, look at a couple of different methods, including using the Nano VNA and a couple of other tools. A crystal can be modeled with this fairly simple circuit. The motional resistance, motional inductance, and motional capacitance really determine the series resonant point of the crystal and the Q of that crystal. And then the, uh, those components along with the holder capacitance typically determine the parallel resonant point of the crystal. At the series resonant frequency, the crystal exhibits its lowest impedance from one end to the other. At the parallel resonant frequency point, the terminal impedance of the crystal is very high. And generally, each of these parameters, particularly the motional inductance capacitance and holder capacitance, are needed when you're going to design filters, oscillators, and circuits like that. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how to measure those parameters. Now my reference for making this video is this paper called uh, Crystal Motional Parameters, a Comparison of Measurement Procedures that was written by Jack Smith, K8ZOA. In this paper, Mr. Smith uses a reference crystal that's very precisely characterized for all of its motional properties and compares a more than a dozen different measurement techniques to see how close each of them comes to the actual value for that crystal. Now, of course, I don't have access to a, a precisely characterized reference crystal or a lot of the specialized equipment that Mr. Smith used for this paper. So what we're going to do is just take a look at five or six different measurement techniques using the Nano VNA and a couple of other tools and just compare those results uh, to each other uh, based on just a crystal that I pulled out of my junk box. So the equipment we'll use in this video are my Nano VNA H4 with Dislord version 1.0.39 firmware which gives me 401 measurement points which is helpful to get a more precise measurement at the uh, series and parallel resonant frequency points. I'm also going to measure the holder capacitance two ways, one using my almost all digital electronics LC meter, and then I'm going to back up that measurement using the, my DE5000 LCR meter. Uh, one of the measurement techniques actually needs a frequency counter, and that's called the G3UUR me test method. So I've got a custom-built uh, G3UUR test circuit, and we'll use that with a Tektronix frequency counter and a 12-volt power supply. And then for all the VNA measurements, I've got a homemade through test fixture, which will allow me to put the crystal in series with port 1 and port 2 of the VNA. We'll take a look at a couple of ways of measuring the holder capacitance. We'll also measure the emotional resistance using the Nano VNA. And then we'll take a look at four different methods for measuring the emotional inductance and capacitance. The G3UUR method, the phase shift method, the minus 3 dB method, and the series parallel method. The first one will use the counter, the latter three will use the Nano VNA. Now, a couple of tips uh, when using the Nano VNA when measuring crystals. You'll probably want to run some initial through scans, S21 scans, to determine the series and parallel resonant frequency points. And then calibrate a span that covers the series and parallel resonant frequencies and store that one because we're going to use that later. And then also calibrate a narrower span that just covers the series frequency resonant point, maybe just a, a you know five or ten kilohertz surrounding that series resonant point to get very good frequency resolution. We'll need that for some of the later calculations as well. So you have those two stored calibration points. And if you have the choice, use the highest number of sweep points available to give you the best resolution and frequency uh, to, to measure these particular resonant points. So first we'll measure the holder capacitance, C0. Now it's called the holder capacitance because way back in the day before you could buy crystals that are nicely packaged like these, uh, guys would oftentimes cut and file and grind their own crystals and mount them in a holder like this. Or if we took these screws off, you'd find a couple of metal plates and a little spring that you essentially put your crystal or your quartz wafer between and then close it down in here and use this in your radio circuits and things like that. And this was simply called a crystal holder. So even though we don't uh, use crystals and holders like this and grind our own crystals anymore, uh, the capacitance of the housing is still called the holder capacitance. We'll measure that holder capacitance typically using a test frequency that's well below the crystal frequency. And that's so that the motional properties of the crystal don't really interfere with just measuring essentially the capacitance of this mechanical holder. So to start off with my LC meter from AADE, let's turn it on, let it do its uh, quick little calibration until you want to measure capacitance. Now I've got a fixture in here that makes it easy for me to plug in uh, my crystal, so I'm just going to zero out the capacitance of my little fixture here. 
we stick the crystal in there. And we're looking at oh, 3.69 to 3.7 picofarads. Looks like it's spending more time on 3.69, so that's what we'll call it. So now with the DE5000, let's turn it on. Now we want it, the highest measurement frequency we can use with this meter is 100 kilohertz. So let's set that since we're measuring a fairly low capacitance here. We'll stick this in the test socket here. And we'll see we're measuring oh, about 3.75 picofarads. So now with the nano VNA, I, I calibrated a, uh, a frequency region that's about 4 megahertz wide uh, around uh, where the resonant frequency is of this crystal. So I can make a capacitance measurement uh, about 2 megahertz below that. If we look carefully, I can see I got about 160, 170, 180 femtofarads of capacitance on the uh, uh, S11. So uh, if we add the crystal to this, uh, we should see that jump up. And uh, so we're measuring, oh, let's see, about 3.98 picofarads uh, of holder capacitance. So we'll take that 3.98 minus, we'll call it 180 femtofarads. Well, that gives me just about uh, 3.8 picofarads measured with the nano VNA. Now, the nice thing is that all these results are really pretty close. If we average those together, we wind up with 3.747 picofarads for the holder capacitance C0. And for the remainder of any of the VNA-based crystal measurements, I'm just using this little universal series fixture that I built. Uh, a couple of SMA connectors um, with an open between them. I've got a couple of pin sockets connected to the center pins of the SMA connectors. One end goes to channel 0 or port 1, the other end uh, going down through this coax to channel 1 or port 2. And we'll be focusing primarily on our S21 measurements. Now in the paper by Mr. Smith, he also describes making a low impedance fixture where you've got a couple of uh, resistive attenuators at either end so that the crystal, instead of seeing 50 ohms, sees 12 and a half ohms. And that should give you better results for measuring some of the low impedance values like the emotional resistance. But I, I, I built it, and I did some experiments with it, and I found that particularly when trying to measure the parallel resonant frequency, the nano VNA didn't have enough dynamic range because of the attenuation through that fixture. So I found I got pretty decent results with this simple 50 ohm through fixture, so that's what we're going to use. So I ran a couple of wideband scans on this 18.73 megahertz crystal to determine, you know, kind of where the series and parallel resonant frequencies were, and then set up a span, in this case about 100 kilohertz wide, to kind of spread them out a little bit to get a more precise measurement at those two points. So what we're looking at here uh, on S21, the blue trace here, is the insertion uh, or transmission coefficient. Uh, which is very close to zero at the series resonant point, in indicating that the crystal has a very low impedance and it's a very, very high impedance, meaning blocking almost all that signal coming through at the parallel resonant frequency point. The purple trace is the phase of S21, which we can see is plus 90 degrees at low frequencies, crosses through zero degrees right at our, our series resonant point, then goes down to minus 90 degrees, and then we rock it back up again right at the parallel resonant frequency point. And we're also showing the reflection properties, or S11. Log magnitude is the yellow trace. That's uh, We can see we've got uh, about zero dB, which means I'm reflecting most of the energy back off of that crystal because it has a high impedance. And then at the resonant point, it's allowing that signal to pass through. So then it comes back up again. And then we're also looking at the complex impedance with the Smith chart here. Now to measure the seri effective series resistance or the motional resistance, we're essentially going to measure S21 over a narrow span right around the series resonant frequency. We'll call it FS, sometimes you'll see it called FR. And we're going to do that over a much narrower span, typically 10 kilohertz or less. So for this series through method, we're just going to measure you know, through the crystal, again record the S21 at the zero degree phase point, which should correspond pretty closely, if not exactly, to the minimum S21 value. Let's also record the series resonant frequency at that same zero degree phase point. Now that I can see both the series and parallel resonant frequency points, I have another setup here that is just looking at centered around the series resonant point, just about a 10 kilohertz span. And we can carefully move the marker back and forth to look for the minimum S21 value. And I'm seeing it about uh, minus 0.6 dB. And it looks like uh, if I get close to that zero degree point here, we're at about uh, 18.723225 megahertz. 
Now this is the calculation to go from the S21 value to our emotional resistance. We essentially take uh, the S21 value and negate it. So we're essentially going to remove the, the negative sign. So we'll have 0.6 divided by 20, subtract 1 from that, and then multiply two times the load resistance seen on either side uh, of the crystal. So the crystal sees 50 ohms in our 50 ohm fixture, so we're going to essentially multiply by 100. And if you run through that calculation, we compute the emotional resistance to be 7.152 ohms. Now you could also run a shunt through measurement uh, where you actually have the crystal in shunt and, st and measuring a straight through with the crystal shunting to ground and measure a, still measure S21 and then the calculation uh, is this one here. This calculation is a little more involved so I didn't bother going through it here uh, but uh, I found that the series through measurement seems to work pretty well. So that takes care of measuring the motional resistance of the crystal and now let's focus on our couple of different methods that we have for looking at the emotional capacitance and emotional inductance. Now this first method for measuring the emotional capacitance and inductance is called the G3UUR method. And it uses a simple crystal uh, Colpitts oscillator and measures the frequency coming out of this oscillator under two conditions. With the crystal grounded and with the crystal going through a small value capacitor. And this small value capacitor is typically anywhere between you know, 30 and 60 picofarads. I chose a 47 picofarad capacitor that I carefully measured before putting it in this circuit. So here's a little test oscillator circuit that I built. Uh, in fact, I've got a video on this I'll uh, link down below. And uh, so I've got the crystal in a position where I'm connecting it up uh, directly to ground. And we go take a look at the uh, frequency counter. All right, we can see that it's measuring about 18.72384. Uh, megahertz. So I now move the crystal so that it is in series with the 47 picofarad capacitor. Well, we're measuring 18.72661 megahertz. So we take our two measured frequencies. The difference between those is 2.7 kilohertz. We can compute the emotional capacitance using 47 picofarads and the 3.747 picofarad uh, C0 that we measured earlier and that delta F and we wind up with emotional capacitance of 15.02 femtofarads and then enter that into this equation here 2 pi times this frequency squared multiplied by the emotional capacitance and we get emotional inductance of 4.81 millihenries. Now the next three methods use the nano VNA and the first one is called the phase shift method and here we're going to again set up a span of oh, 5 to 10 kilohertz around the series resonant frequency and particularly we want to look at uh, S21 log magnitude and S21 uh, phase. So what we're going to measure is essentially our uh, S21, okay, find our series resonant frequency essentially at the zero degree point. And then we're going to move the marker back until uh, we see a plus 45 degree uh, phase shift and measure that frequency, we'll call that FL. And we'll move the marker the other way and measure our minus 45 degree phase shift point. We'll call that FH. And then we're we'll also, again, we'll grab uh, S21 uh, at the center frequency point. And we can use that to compute the emotional uh, resistance. We've already done that, so we'll just carry that uh, measurement over from our previous results. Okay, using that same setup that uh, is zoomed in around the series resonant point, uh, first thing we want to do is take a look at the uh, zero degree point, which is right about here. Sitting at about 0.2 degrees, I think that's as close as I can get. So we measure our series resonant frequency at 18.723200. So next we'll move the markers until we're essentially at plus 45 degrees. There's 44.7, 45.1, so that's pretty close. So we're at 45.1 degrees. And we can see the frequency is 18.721475. Okay, and then we can go back and uh, measure at the minus 45 degree point. Let's see, 42, 3, 4, 44.7, 40, minus 45.1. We can see our frequency is 18.724900. We've just carried over our calculation for the emotional uh, resistance that we've done earlier. We calculate R effective, which is just the emotional resistance plus 2 times RL, which in this case is 2 times 50, so that's 107.152. The chain, the delta frequency between FH and FL, in this case is 3.425 kilohertz. 
We can compute then the motional capacitance, 14.51 femtofarads, and then the motional inductance of 4.98 millihenries. So the 3dB method is actually pretty similar to the uh, phase shift method. We're still going to look at that same 5 to 10 kilohertz span around the series resonant frequency. Uh, we'll look at uh, S21 log magnitude and also look at phase, but really we're only interested really in this case of the log magnitude. So what we want to look at is the point where the S21 is 3 dB down from our peak value. So we're not, not absolute 3 dB down, but 3 dB bound, down from whatever S21 we measure at this location here. So the first thing you want to do is measure S21 at its highest point, and we already figured out that's about uh, minus 0 0.6. So we want to measure down to minus 3.6, essentially on either side and record those two frequencies. And then from that we can compute the results. Okay, so we can see again at our resonant point where uh, S21 is about minus uh, 0.6. So we want to look at what frequencies give us minus 3.06 on either side. So let's see how close we can get. It looks like that's close, minus 3.62. So that low frequency is uh, 18.72135. And then we can go measure on the other side and look for minus 3.6 on the other side here. And let's see, minus 3.62, that's pretty close. And our frequency here is 18.724825. Using the series resonant frequency from previous measurement and the uh, 3 dB down frequencies on either side, we can compute the delta frequency, the Q, and then the emotional uh, inductance of 4.91 millihenries and the emotional capacitance of 14.72 femtofarads. Our final measurement using the VNA uh, is to look at the series parallel method. And here we're going to set up a little bit wider span to show both the series and parallel resonance, both the peak and the dip in the S21. That will be typically a 50 to 150 kilohertz span. And we'll look at uh, you know, essentially S21 uh, primarily, but we'll also keep the phase plot up there as well. And uh, we'll measure the series and parallel resonant frequency points. And if you don't have a whole lot of points, if you've got only 101 points on your VNA, you might want to span tighter around each of those to get better resolution. And then once we have those measurements, then we can simply compute the motional capacitance and inductance with these two equations here. And so I'm using uh, the 100 kilohertz span here so I can see the series and parallel resonant points. And we'll move the marker to the peak of the series resonant point here. And that should be right about there. In this case we're seeing uh, 18.723250. Yeah, it's a little bit different than what we measured when we zoomed in because I don't have quite the resolution, but uh, the difference is down in the tens of hertz here, so I'm not too worried about it. And then we'll scroll down with the markers and look at the, uh, let's see, right around here, around the parallel resonant frequency point. And it looks like that's probably about as close as we're going to get right in here. And uh, so 18.761500. We run through those calculations and we wind up with emotional capacitance of 15.31 picofarads and uh, emotional inductance of 4.72 millihenries. In this equation, uh, C stray is at the stray capacitance of the fixture uh, where you measured uh, C0. In our case, we zeroed that out, so essentially we didn't need that uh, parameter, but that's the equation you find in the paper. Okay, so here's a summary of what we found. Uh, we measured uh, the emotional resistance of 7.152, three different measures of the uh, holder capacitance, and they're all really darn close, so uh, any one of those would work fine. Now, of course, we don't have any way of knowing which of these is really closest to the actual value, but the good thing that we can see here is that they're all pretty darn close. Uh, they all measured in the neighborhood of you know, 14 and a half to a little over 15 femtofarads uh, of emotional capacitance, and then ranging from about 4.7 to 4.9 or 4.98 millihenries for the emotional inductance. You know, which of these are the closest? I don't really know. But based on Mr. Smith's paper, uh, I think he found that the G3UUR uh, method was actually one of the more accurate ones, as well as the, the phase shift measurements. So I'd probably you know, put more stock in those two measurements than the other two. But the idea here was just to ensure that even with these very, uh, you know, very different methods in some cases, that the results are all pretty similar.
I hope you enjoyed this look at several different methods for characterizing crystals using LC meters and homebrew circuits and the Nano VNA. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. And be sure to check uh, the notes down below the video for links to the paper as well as my notes here. Thanks again as always for watching, and we'll see you next time.